Mariners lose eight to three. They fall to 85 and 73 on the season. They lose two of three against the Astros in that series. They fall to game and a half back with four games left to be played in the final wild card spots. Uh, go over the scoring plays. Mariners get off to a nice start with a JP Crawford homer in the first inning to lead things off. Fourth inning, Jordan Alvarez homers, Mauricio Dubon homers, the latter which is a three run homer on top of the solo shot, all off Bryce Miller. 4 1 Astros. Mariners bounce back. Uh, Eugenio Suarez. Suarez. Eugenio Suarez singles home Jose Caballero and Big Dumper, 4 3. It's pretty much all Astros from that point. In the seventh inning, they get three. Kyle Tucker double, uh, Jose Abreu single, Michael Brantley single, 7-3, and they punctuate the victory with a Martin Maldonado homer in the eighth inning off of what I believe is Trent Thornton. Before we get into me trying to find some positives and, you know, some negatives, we do have to thank the good people of Simply Seattle for sponsoring the show. The very best in Seattle sports gear. Lots of great stuff for the Mariners, the Seahawks, the Kraken, the Sounders, the Sonics. Just a ton of awesome stuff. And it's not just stuff like hats and hoodies. There's lots of great t-shirts. There's lots of great jackets. I cannot recommend them enough. I say it every video, but it's for with good reason. They are awesome. They have the very best Seattle sports gear. And once you find all your cool sports gear, use code MOLLYWAP15 to save 15% off your order. Molly Wap 15, all one word. Uh, and thank you so much once again, Simply Seattle, for sponsoring this show. It means a lot. And yeah, they're awesome. You know what's not awesome? This. Do I even want to do any positives? I mean, I don't know if I want to, but I should. Uh, Crawford reaches four times. Suarez reaches four times and drives in a couple of runs. Anybody else really worth talking about as a positive offensively? No. Uh, Sam Hagerty reaches twice. Good for you. Steals a base. Used to look like a nice little option late in the season, which has been nice. Uh, Pitching-wise, Spire was fine. Topa gives up two earned runs, but actually I think was okay. Not great, but okay. Uh, Dominic Leon doesn't give up a run. Lots of negatives on top of just this sucking. Stinking. I should say stinking. Uh, so Bryce Miller was pretty good for the first three innings. They'd get away with some middle middle stuff but he was pretty good. A fourth inning is just an example, though, of how much work there is to be done if he's going to be anything more than a back-end starter. He got shelled. He got shelled that second time through the lineup. And, you know, it, he can get away with middle-middle more than some guys can because of how much spin he generates. But not that much middle middle. Not against Jordan Alvarez, who they say that home run went 442 feet. Maybe they confused feet with yards. That ball was just scorched. Like on Monday, Alvarez goes deep, and I think it was Monday. It wasn't even a bad pitch. He just golfed the thing out. Oh, this was a bad bad pitch and then he gives up you know self-inflicted damage and a long home run to Mauricio Dubon and that ball was scorched too clobbered just wasn't nearly good enough just wasn't nearly good enough Topaz didn't miss any bats there were a lot of strikes but and then Brash comes in and look He wasn't good. I also hate the usage. It's not just about the protecting the arm stuff. He threw 25 pitches in two innings yesterday. And I realize you're just, you're hoping that he can give you that strikeout. 
or get that quick double play ball. But they got such a good look at him yesterday. And you saw Kyle Tucker hit the ball fairly hard off of him yesterday, too. And, uh, you know, part of it is, hey, they're limited, in part because of the Paul C. Wall trade. And there's no there's no denying that Brush did stink today or yesterday. And again, not again. Uh, I again to people who follow me on Twitter, I'm sorry this video is so late. I uh, I just didn't have any time to record last night. It's been those of you who know know, but it's been hard. Really, really hard. This didn't help. But yeah, did not like the brass usage. And unfortunately, it didn't work out. Not even close to working out. Could not keep you in the game. And another reason why you're not in this game is because the offense, once again, just can't come up clutch. One for 13 with runners in scoring position. Only player with a run a hit with runners in scoring position is a Eugenio Suarez. And you know, I hate doing it, you know, but we got to talk about it. Uh, Julio was so. Here's the thing: Julio's first at bat was terrific. I was feeling so good. Bryce Miller had a fine first inning. And then Crawford hits that home run. And then Julio has a terrific at bat. Awesome. Draws that walk. Gets on. You're feeling good. And then from that point on, Julio Rodriguez probably played his worst offensive game as a Seattle Mariner. Couple of good pitches, no doubt about it. Framber Valdez did not have his best command, but he did have that yacker working. Tip of the cap there. But a four strikeout night where you leave that many guys on, you you can't. You just got to call it like it is. It, it he 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 didn't do his job. He did not do his job. You know the Mariners are not even kind of in this position if not for Julio Rodriguez. But this is a daily show, and we're going to point it out. Really, really bad game from him. T. Oscar Hernandez, though, even worse. Because not only does T. Oscar Hernandez go over five with three strikeouts, his effort on that ball in the, I believe it was the seventh inning. Yeah, it was definitely the seventh inning. I mean, that opened the floodgates, folks. To not be able to get in front of that baseball is pathetic. I do not care what the metrics say. And in fact, I haven't even looked at the metrics all that recently. Every once in a while, T. Oscar Hernandez is athletic enough to go get a baseball. And he did make a really nice catch on Tuesday. Tuesday? Yeah. My days are just... But he's a bad defensive player. In fact, I don't want to see T. Oscar Hernandez ever play in the outfield again. More than fine with him coming back as my designated hitter. But I don't want to see him play the outfield ever again. Horrific game. France was bad. Rally was bad. Don't want to spend too much time talking about the um, stuff that happens in the, I believe it was the sixth inning after that Julio strikeout, which was, I think, actually his worst at bat. That was, that slider was nowhere close. Very, very poor at bat. I will say this. Um, homophobia should never have been accepted. For it to happen in 2023 is reprehensible Hector Neris should be suspended 
and I will boo the man every time he touches baseball. And for every fan that's out there defending him, eat poop. It's it's not a, it's not a likable team. It's not a likable fan base. They don't care. Nor should they. Well, they shouldn't be homophobic. Anybody defending homophobia is just a bad person. But they don't care. Good for the Seattle Mariners for defending their teammate after being called a reprehensible word. Beyond reprehensible. Disgusting, vile. Disgusting. Just disgusting. So, there's four games left. And by the way, I, I don't think I said so at the in this video. The Mariners have been eliminated from American League West contention. The best they can do is finish at 89 and 73. And because Texas has already clinched that tiebreaker, it's not good enough. So they will not win the American League West for the 22nd consecutive season. And I'll be honest with you, I'm pretty bummed about it. It was there. It was there for the taking. And you just absolutely played yourself out of it. Making the postseason is cool. But the ultimate goal should be winning divisions and winning World Series. And when you win that division, especially with these new rules, with this new playoff format, winning a division and guaranteeing home games is huge. It's not just huge from a... Uh, strategical point of view it's huge for a fan base point of view i want to go to postseason games now at the very least at the very best excuse me you're talking about one home game guaranteed in a week or so and they're going to need help to even do that they're going to need help to even do that because if Houston wins these next three games against Arizona, it's over. Seattle's going to need to win uh, at least three of four, it looks like. Probably all four. And even then, you need Houston to lose at least one game. Your magic number is five. Any combination of five wins for the Mariners and... <clears throat> excuse me, any combination of five of wins for the Mariners and losses for the Astros gets you in. Now, the Blue Jays also, you know, they could help you out by not helping themselves out. They play New York for one more game. They've been shut out these last two games. Thanks, Yankees, for a little bit of help there. But you need miracles now. Miracles might be too strong a word. You need a lot of help. And do remember that the Mariners do have the tiebreaker still over the Astros. So a tie is good enough. So if Houston's 89 and 73 and the Mariners are 89 and 73, Mariners get in. But you need help. And I guess one fortunate thing here is uh, you are looking at a Diamondbacks team that's motivated. They're playing for their playoff spot. There's a lot to play for for them. So those games matter. It's always nice when you're playing a team late in the season that has something to play for, you know. So if, if you're looking to be Mr. Optimism or Mrs. Optimism or anything anything else, you're just looking to be optimistic is what I should say. There's These games still matter. 
but you've dug a huge hole now. The huge hole was dug with the sweeps against the Rangers. Let's just be honest here. This wasn't good by any stretch of the imagination. But hole dug. I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated, I'm sad, and I'm I'm overwhelmed. Like, this might be the most overwhelmed I've ever been in my life, if I'm being completely honest with you. There's just so much to do. There's so much going on in my life right now. And, you know, I love doing these videos, thankfully. But they're not necessarily the fun distraction that I thought they'd be. Logan Gilbert against Jordan Montgomery rematch of the pitching matchup. That was pretty darn good on Saturday. Hopefully Gilbert can be good and uh, Montgomery can uh, not be. I'd really appreciate you hitting like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate you telling your friends, whatever, you know, Start a start a start a chain talking about my OY. We will um not go live for this one, but we will go live Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Hopefully those games still matter. But either way, we'll go live. Bummer. Bummer. 